How would you multiply 413 by 721? I want to show you a pretty old way to do this multiplication that frankly is quite popular. To begin, of course, we must draw a jealous spouse looking through a window. So there's my attempt at a window. You know how windows are with those grids that they've got looking outside of the house. You know how it is. And then of course we have to draw the jealous spouse. So here the spouse is outside looking into the window and they are none too pleased with what they see. Now for the method to work, you actually don't have to draw the spouse, but you do have to draw what they see. And what they see is multiplication, specifically 413 times 721. In the top row of the grid that is formed by this window, we have 413. Each digit gets a column. Going down the right side, each digit of 721 gets a row. And then one last thing, each of these squares in the window needs to be cut by its diagonal. And with that, we're finally prepared to do the multiplication. In each square, we simply write the product of the single digit multiplication with the column number times the row number. Four times seven is 28. So we write 28, putting the tens digit in the upper part of the square and the ones digit in the lower part of the square. And we proceed in this manner. Four times two is eight. So we put a zero in the upper part of the square and an eight in the lower part of the square. Similarly, four times one is four. So we write zero four and continue. One times seven, that's seven. One times two, that's two. One times one is one. Three times seven is 21. Three times two is six. And three times one is three. After a bunch of very easy single digit multiplication, the answer lies here before us. All we have to do is add up these diagonal slices and put each sum in these squares at the bottom and side. So for example, this first diagonal slice gives us that three, and that's going to be what we put here. The next diagonal slice gives us one plus zero plus six, and so we have seven. The next diagonal slice is four plus zero plus two plus zero plus one, so again, seven. Then we have zero plus eight plus zero plus seven plus two, so that's going to be 17. So we'll put a seven here and carry the one. And then we have one plus zero plus eight plus zero, so that's going to be nine. And then finally, of course, we have two. And the answer to the multiplication is read from top left to bottom right. 297,773. And so there's the answer to our original multiplication problem. So this method of multiplication is actually called the gelosia method. That's the Italian word for jealousy and does indeed come from a jealous spouse who may look through a window, which is resembled by this mathematical method and, you know, spy on their spouse. It does have many other names as well. Perhaps the most common is the lattice method. It's not clear where this method was first introduced, but at least in the world of Arab mathematics, it was in the late 1200s that Abu Labas Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Uthman al-Azdi al marakushi introduced it in one of his works. It seems likely that this method of multiplication was discovered independently at different times throughout the world. It's sometimes said that Fibonacci brought it to the world of European mathematics, but so far as I can tell, there is no actual appearance of this method in his written works, although it should be noted that the earliest edition of his Liber Abaci text is lost to history. So what do you think of the Gelosia method? John Napier, one of the great intellectuals of his time, was a big fan of it. In fact, he basically repurposed it into a calculation device called Napier's Bones. Of course, the method does take a decent amount of time to set up with all of these grid lines, but what it loses in that efficiency, it gains by 
by reducing all multiplication to just single digit multiplication and then basic addition, which on a step by step basis is a little bit easier than the traditional long multiplication method that's at least taught in America that was invented or popularized at least in the 19th century. The Gelosia or lattice method for multiplication also works pretty slick when decimals are involved. Let's do a quick example of that. Let's say we're doing 7.81 and we're going to multiply this by 24.6. Again, I'll begin by drawing the window through which the jealous spouse peers. All right, I made that a bit lopsided. Let me go ahead and write the diagonals. Once we set up the lattice, we can write the numbers to be multiplied in the top and the right. As usual, we will ignore the decimal point until we get to our final answer, and then you'll see the very slick way in which we figure out where the decimal point should be placed. Beginning to go through the multiplication, 7 times 2 is 14, 7 times 4 is 28, 7 times 6 is 42, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 4 is 32, 8 times 6 is 48, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 6 is 6. We then again add up the diagonal slices. This gives us 6, this gives us 12, so write the 2, carry the 1, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so write the 1, carry a 1. 4, 5, 13, 16, 19. So write the 9, carry a 1, 7, 8, and then 1. Whoops, double check, I just made a little error here. 5, 13, 16, 22. This should be a 2. We should have carried a 2, and then this wouldn't be an 8, this would be a 9. All right, so we've got the correct digits, 1, 9, 2. Let me scratch that out a little more. 1, 9, 2, 1, 2, 6. Now, where does the decimal point go? Well, in our original numbers, the decimal point in 781 was right here, 7.81, and for 24.6, it was right here. Then we need only look at the grid lines where these decimal points intersect. There's that first decimal point, and there's the second one and we see that they intersect right here which is right on this diagonal that tells us that in fact the decimal point goes right there so the answer is 192.126 192.126 so that's pretty slick. Teachers will have mixed opinions on this method. As algorithms go, it's nice because it breaks it down into super duper simple steps, just single digit multiplication. However, of course, it takes a while to set up and it's also completely disjointed from what multiplication really is. A lot of teachers like the area method as that really captures what multiplication is doing as calculating area. Quickly looking back at our first example, we should make sure it's clear why this method works. Of course, to multiply 413 by 721, we do need to do these individual multiplications and add them together, so it's really a matter of how this chart is organizing this so that the place values are correct. Certainly, we need to take these 400s and multiply them by those 700s. We need to take this 110 and multiply it by those 700s. We need to do all of this, but how do we know the place values are right? Well, for example, look at what goes in the tens place. Look at these individual three numbers that we added up to get that seven. This one is made up of tens times units. So indeed it should be in the tens place. This zero is counting the tens because it's in the upper half of the square, the tens that resulted from the product of units. In this case, there were no such tens. This six is counting the units times tens. So again, that's in the tens place. What about in the hundreds place? Well, look at this four. It's counting hundreds times units. This zero is counting the tens place of tens times units, so it's counting hundreds. This two is counting tens times tens, so hundreds. This zero is counting the tens place of the units times tens, so it's counting hundreds, and so on. So it's pretty cool how this works. Let me know what you think in the comments and what your preferred method of multiplication is, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. Breaking in my past, I'm making it up fast. So slow down, give me the time.
time so I can fake it. Grace it, don't move words and just how I say shit. And let me speak my poetry to your face. It's not in the mid if you ain't listening. Not infinite if you ain't really in the